Hey, everybody out there. Thanks for joining today. I'm Clayton Wood, and I'm excited to be coming to you live. It's 10 a.m. on the West Coast of the United States, and we're here to kick off uh, the Advanced Marketing, Advanced Content Marketing Summit. I'm joined today with my co-hosts, uh, Vasil Azarov and Neil Patel, as you all know. So uh, thanks, guys, for joining me. Vasil, how are you doing this morning? Very good. Thank you, Clayton. Cool. So just to give you a little bit of a rundown on what we'll be doing today, uh, we're starting off this entire summit with Neil's uh, first session. He'll be coming back at the end to do uh, a pretty great Q&A, a long Q&A uh, on Friday. But to get things started, uh, we're going to have him for the next hour, and he's going to be talking about how he does content marketing. Uh, I'll give everybody a couple of minutes to get into the chat. We might have some stragglers that are coming in the next minute or two. But we'll get kicked off here in just a very short time frame. But before we get started, I want to give everybody a couple of reminders. So at the end of each session, we're going to be able to, you're going to be able to ask the speaker questions. Um, there's a chat box right on the right side of your screen that's a great place for you to talk to each other and interact. But if you want a question answered from one of the speakers, the best place to write and have the question answered is right below the screen. So right below, uh, this entire environment, there's a, a orange button, orangish red button, uh, and it's the button to submit uh, a question. So when you click that button, write your question in there, other people can upvote it, and depending on how much time we have at the end of each session, we will hopefully get to it. We're going to do our best to get to all of your questions today, and the best way for that to happen is if you put the question in the bottom uh, right under the screen where you see us here, okay? So uh, let's find out where everybody's from. We've got, wow, a, a ton of people, and they're all calling out their areas, but we want to welcome everybody. Thanks for coming to our time zone today. It's very, very nice of you. We've got people from all over the world, uh, too many to read, Spain, Arizona, Bogota, Boston, tons of stuff, um, and we're all here to learn about content marketing. When we started doing this uh, event series with Neil, one of the things we have to make sure of is that you get a ton of value. So we're excited to have everybody here. Um, we've got the summit schedule at summit.neilpatel.com. Go and check out uh, which uh, sessions are applicable to you. And without further ado, let's welcome Neil. Neil, thanks for joining us. Uh, no worries. And everyone, thank you guys for being here. So I see everyone from different places, from New York to India to Toronto to Canada, right? Uh, South Africa, the cities, and appreciate everyone just for coming and attending. Um, today, I want to do something a bit unique. I've given so many presentations with PowerPoint slides and stuff like that. It gets quite boring after a while, right? Um, and not just that, it's just like me showing you on a PowerPoint presentation, like here's how you do tactic one and two. What I found is a lot of people don't really follow along. So I wanted to do a bit of mixture of today and then I believe Clayton and I have a Q&A too. Is that tomorrow or Friday? That's on Friday. Friday. That's on Friday. So I want to do a bit of mixture of both in which from the first virtual summit we did, I started sharing my screen, right, Clint? Was that the first one that we did? Yeah. Uh-huh. And everyone ended up loving it. So today, and even on Friday, you know, Friday we'll do more Q&A than today. I want to share my screen today specifically and show you guys how I do content marketing, right? Like the whole process, why I'm doing certain things, how I'm looking at the data, how I'm growing, and then from there, of course, you guys can learn, you can see the results, and you can see like the exact process I'm using. As you have questions, feel free to ask them, and then Clayton can help moderate, and then at the same time, you can just chime in as I'm like browsing, and it, when you see something that could be relevant, or you see some questions that are really good, let me know, and I will answer them and show everything on my screen. Sounds so great. Sounds good. I'm gonna turn off my camera. So that way it focuses on the screen. And I believe for them, Clayton and the seal as well, I believe when you guys share your camera, it makes my screen smaller. So maybe you guys want to turn off your camera as well. Yep, let's get all that set up. So uh, as you're sharing your screen, we'll just sort of introduce the session. 
This one is forget PowerPoint. In this session, Neil will show the audience everything he does on his own sites, analytics, driving traffic, a bunch more. So let's get uh, that screen sharing up. Uh, give us just a few seconds if you'll just. Yeah, I think you guys can see my screen. You may need to turn off yours though. Yep, we're ready to go. Your screen's loading and yeah, we can see it. Excellent. All right, you have to turn up your camera. Got it. Turn it off yet? All right. Okay, so let's first get started in my analytics, all right? I think it's already loaded. So audience overview. You guys can see my traffic stats. There's not really much to hide. So last seven days, I was at 214,000 unique visitors. It's not too shabby considering I don't do paid advertising. Um, there was a huge jump. So this is August. Let's look at August of last year, 2016. Keep in mind, I was also doing paid ads then. I was at 454. Now I'm at 200 and something thousand in seven days, right? You guys see the difference? Like, you know, this is August 2016. This is, I don't know, we can do a whole month, like July. So 454, I look at users because users are unique. So 454 to 695. So my traffic is still growing. And here's one strategy that I did. It's hard to see when I look at these months, but if you look at last year, so we can pick any day, like we can pick October 2016. And let's go into some of my blog posts. The site content, all pages. Um, so you see this, 13 secrets that'll boost your Facebook organic reach. All right, this post has 13,404 visits. Now, if you fast forward to today, let's go to July, because I have no idea what the traffic is like in July, but it should be higher. Mm -hmm. It did not show up. Oh, because it was dates. I removed the dates eventually in the URLs. I was like 2015, 9, 27. I removed the dates. That did help with traffic, but let's go back. I have to find the 13 post article. I have so many articles, it takes forever, friends. Okay, so you see the difference? It went from 13,000 to 18,000. That's a big difference. You want to know what the change was? It was really simple. So Google Webmaster Tools. Loading it up. And you guys should be all doing this. So you click on search traffic, search analytics, and from there you wanna click on pages. Pages shows you the top pages that you have. So after you write your first blog post, whatever it is, or after you write a blog post, six months later it tends to start ranking. Sometimes you get lucky, it happens within two to three months, but usually six months. So what I do is I take that article, and then I go into uh, Google Webmaster Tools. Keep in mind, Google Webmaster Tools always shows a lower number than what it really is. Um, I don't know why, at least for me it does. So once you click on the page, then you click on queries, and it'll show you all of the queries that that page is getting traffic for. So once I clicked on queries, still loading, you'll see a whole list of keywords that they're driving traffic for, impressions. Let's just click them all because it's so slow. All right, so you see this? Clicks, position. So I would take all these keywords, like this one, Facebook organic reach. I would take all these keywords, they're ranking better now because they modify the article. And what I did is I would show like 500 rows, so it has all the keywords. I sorted it by impressions. The table was a minute now, blah, 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 blah. I don't know why it's admitting the table. All right, thanks Google. Too much data maybe? Possibly. That sucks. Okay, so. Let's go back to the, I'd rather have 50 results than nothing. Okay, so we would take these keywords, I would sort them by impressions and click the rate. So I can see which keywords have the highest impression count. 
like Facebook marketing strategy gets a ton of uh, impressions for being on the eighth page, 80 position, 80.8 is usually eight or ninth page, right? However you want to look at it. Uh, so when I would look at all of this, I would sort by impressions and then I would take all of these keywords and then I would integrate them within my blog posts. So let's go to my post. And this post is now changed. It's not 13. Facebook organic reach search posts. My editor is in there. Grant is currently editing. Okay. You see it's now called 20 secrets that'll boost your Facebook organic reach versus the old one of 13 secrets. In other words, what I did is I took this post and I made it super detailed and I added in all the keywords. It works really well each and every single time. So the page is loading and I'll show you other examples that I did this with. Right, like as you can see, and then I create a table list where you can just click and you can go down to the section, right? And I'm integrating the keywords within the content. The page is super long. If, if you look at how many keywords now, that this post has 9,858 keywords or technically words. Some of them are keyword rich, some of them aren't. Then that's how I rank better is by modifying the articles and adding in all the keywords that do well or that I'm at least getting impressions for. So then that way I know what Google's already ranking me for. If I discuss those topics within my content, I'm much more likely to get ranking. And I do this for a lot of my content pieces. I go through Google Search Console every single week. We go and we figure out, all right, what are the most popular posts that we're ranking for? And we just continually rewrite those articles. That's what is helping increase our traffic and our rankings more than anything else. So if I go month over month, keep in mind August isn't over yet. So I go to like April, I know we weren't doing it all the way back in April, and I go to today. August of course is gonna be lower than July because August isn't over yet. But as you can see, it's pretty much growing, right? April 15, then 12, June, is when we rewrote the article sometime in June. July was our first full month, and like, look, it's just going up. July already, July 1st to 31st, 22,000 visits. July 1st to August 21, third, 21,000 visits. That shows, so 21,498. 21,498 divided by, what's today, 23rd, Clinton? It posted on track for 28,000 visitors this month. That's not too shabby, right? All because we rewrite the post and just put in more keywords. And we're not just stuffing the keywords, we're making it more thorough. So if the post on Google Search Console says, I'll go to the Instagram one so you guys can see. I hate the loading. That's the only bad part about doing the screen sharing live. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> All right, so if you look, real followers on Instagram per day, and let's compare the last or set date range, 90 days, like it's just going up, right? And this is when we rewrote the post. You see the spike? Yep. And then it just kept going and going, all from rewriting. Now here's the key, when you rewrite the post, you can't just rewrite it, you have to include the keywords and then you have to make sure the biggest keywords are in your title tag and meta description. I use the Yoast SEO plugin. So like if you look here, 20 secrets that'll boost your Facebook organic reach. Uh, there you go, I'm like, where's the Yoast one? As you can see, it's updated here, right? Learn how to increase your Facebook uh, reach. By following these 20 secrets, you'll reach more people and grow your Facebook page. I based this all on the keywords. I just took the most popular ones and I added it in the description. And then I made sure the title was relevant as well. And then what you wanna do is, so once you rewrite the page, I then go to crawl, fetches Google. I put in the URL, and you'll see some of the URLs I put, right? How to increase your website traffic SEO, 13 Facebook reach. Like we started doing this all the way in, uh, June, we were doing some earlier as well. 
And then when you do that, you just put in the URL, you click fetch and render. Um, I'm just going to do my home page because I'm too lazy to go find a URL. This eventually will go from status pending to, you know, you can click a button and click submit. It's really that simple. If you don't submit it, Google may not crawl it. It may take like a week or a month or whatever it may be before they pick up the newly written page. So you go partial and then you click request indexing. I'm not going to do that, but you click I'm not a robot and then you just want to click crawl only this URL. You don't need to crawl your whole website and the direct links. So if you just follow that, you can get way more traffic from your content marketing. Now, here's another interesting thing that I ended up learning, right? So let's go into my Google search console. You'll see all the queries and stuff and pages I'm ranking for, all right? So let's go into Google Analytics. Let's go in July. So if we look at July as a month, okay, there is audience overview. All right, so we have traffic of 695,000 unique visitors. And if we look at organic keywords, let's see what we have here, 505,000. Okay, so let's just take that number, 505,000. So you take that 505,000 number, to keep it simple, and let's exclude, I have like a Brazilian blog, I have a German blog, I have a Spanish blog, et cetera. So let's remove the traffic. So Brazil gets roughly 60,000. So let's minus 60,000 Google visitors. I'm just subtracting the Google visitors from the English blog. So Brazil has 60,000. Let's see what Spanish was at for the month. This thing's loading 35. Okay, so Spanish had 35. And German has. German's been going up, 12,000. That's 398,000 visitors, okay? So 398,800. Now let's divide it by how many blog posts. See, what I've learned about blogging is you can't predict which posts are gonna do well for you. It's a hit or miss game. Some posts get you traffic, some don't. It really is a hit or miss game. So if I go publish, Forget this number because that's all languages. If I just look at US, English, UK, that's 722. Keep in mind, I didn't have this much con content in July. I had a lot less. I've been publishing six a day. But if you divide the 398,000 Google visitors for the month, divided by how many blog posts I have, it's 722 blog posts, even if I just take the most recent numbers, right? The numbers are inflated a bit because I didn't have this many blog posts in July again. But if you do 722, that's 551 Google visitors per blog post. See, if you're getting 551 visitors from Google per blog post, what I've learned is when you look at the pages, and I'll show you this. If you go behavior, site content, all pages, and this shows you the pages that are getting the most traffic. It is a hit or miss. Oh, this is German. I'm like, why is it just spike up? All right, so let me go back to global. It is a hit or miss game in which some of your posts will get a lot of traffic like this. What is affiliate marketing? Improve your writing. Very competitors SEO. Uh, how Google search engine really works. And when I go to like show row, Let's do a thousand and go crazy. And when I go down and I look at some of my blog posts, most of them aren't getting a lot of traffic. Like it's crazy. You see all these 20, then you get to 5,000 and it drastically just dies down. For example, get free Pinterest traffic search, not a ton. And that, that's only 200, right? There's 700 plus. If I keep going down, I know I'm going fast. 10 most important SEO tips you need to know. Only get 643 visitors a month. LinkedIn posts, 641, right? As I keep going down, there's so many blog posts that barely get any traffic, right? I can keep going lower and lower and lower. And you'll see this, how to rank for your competitors' keywords, what we learned by analyzing 62-6 million e-commerce keywords, 
172 visitors, unique visitors in the month, right? Like some of these posts barely get anything. Four quick wins to increase your YouTube engagement. 179 visitors. And I can just keep going. As I go down, you'll see posts are only getting like 50 visits a month, right? If I go to page two and all that kind of stuff. This is English Fog, a simple yet effective way to convert blog visitors into customers. 90 visitors a month. The point I'm trying to make is content marketing, I hate to say it, is a hit or miss game. Some of the posts you write will do really well and some won't. So what we found to be the ideal strategy is, is you just go and you just write a shitload of content on everything. And I'll show you in a bit on how we write a shitload of content on everything. And then from there, the content that naturally just gets traffic according to Google Search Console, because you have to click on the pages instead of the queries under Search Analytics, and they'll show you all the top pages. We then just go and rewrite all of these pages and make them better. That's our only main content strategy when it comes to, you know, write quantity, make sure quality is good enough, and then you just go in and the ones that are doing really well, you just go redo them, make them even better, and it's just a pure numbers game. And we found that to be the winning combination. That's why companies like HubSpot get millions and millions of visitors a month to their blog. Are they the best content writers out there? No. Do they have the best quality content? No. Are they really smart? Yes, they're actually exceptionally smart and some of the one of the smartest companies I've ever seen. And Ryan, who works there, he's going to be speaking later on, right? He can break down some of their strategies at HubSpot. He's taught me some like content marketing isn't as effective as just generating tools. Totally right. What's the number one page on my website? A SEO analyzer tool. It's not even content, right? Uh, I learned that from Ryan. And the cool part about doing content marketing is if you just write in quantity, and you know, let's say you write 20 posts, one's a hit, then you just go make that one hit 10 times better. It's just a pure numbers game. And the way we figure out what to write on is really simple. We go to ahrefs.com, I'm loading it up, and we put in all of our competitor URLs. So let's take Search Engine Watch. They were bought out years ago, they haven't done shit with their site, they suck at marketing. I tried buying it too, I would have paid them two million bucks for the site that's dying down. They wouldn't even sell it to me. They blow. All right. So, um, and it's just been dying and dying down. Like eventually they should just get rid of it because they don't know how to fix it. But I look at all of this. Search engine watch, save goodbye to Google. 14 alternative search engines. Traffic estimate. Keep in mind, Ahrefs is always lower than your real number. They're estimating 38,000 visitors. That means they're probably getting around double from Google for this page. So what our strategy is, is because we had a tough time buying sites. I tried buying Search Engine Watch. I had a hard time buying Search Engine Journal, right? I tried buying a lot of the sites in MySpace. I bought Uber Suggest. They sold, they were pretty easy. Um, but what I'm doing is I go and I take everyone's top posts because these are the ones that I know that Google loves. So if you look at this, say goodbye to Google, 14 alternative search engines, right? And I go and let's click on the URL. I know there's an arrow somewhere. I don't want to see who links. I just want to see the post itself. I think I click on the URL. There you go. Okay, so if you look at this post, and I'm not trying to hate, it's written ages and ages ago. Maybe they updated it. I guess it's written in 2016. It's not the best post. Like, they're just giving alternative search engines. They don't even go in depth. They just, the picture takes up most of the screen. And that's it. There's no comments even too, unless maybe they're disappeared and they're somewhere lower on the screen. Either way, as you can see, the post doesn't have a ton of text. And if I do, let's go to SEO book keyword density. Here's another tool I like using. All right, so if I go keyword density analyzer and I put in their key URL, it'll show me how many words and the keywords that they're going after. I'm submitting. Okay, total word count, 1,031 words. Right, 1,884 including stop words. 
that means this post is probably somewhere between a thousand to a thousand like four hundred words because you have to keep in mind if you're on this page there's words like right here right as you can see in this pop-up there's words in the sidebar there's words in the navigation there's words everywhere in the side this is all in most cases not all cases I don't know if it's JavaScript or not it's typically included in the word count um, I'm assuming the comments are in the word count as well maybe I'm wrong but it could be uh, all of this stuff is probably in the word count usually is so if you look at all of that it's not like uh, it, it, it's not like this post is super thorough it has less than a thousand five hundred words probably realistically a thousand two hundred words I can go and I can go write a post saying say goodbye to Google 101 alternative search engines using Brian Dean's skyscraper technique in which I would just write way better content and more thorough content and then I can capture their traffic and eventually try to outrank them that's a beautiful model um, it works extremely well and that is what my team and I are focused on right now we're going to all our competitors find their most popular posts and we're just cranking out content that is more popular than theirs that simple we also do the same with BuzzSumo so we'll go to buzzsumo.com I'm like waiting for it to load I'm like so impatient So let's say you're doing this against me, Neil Patel. I would then go and rewrite all of my own most popular posts if I were you, right? Like how to get 300 real targeted Instagram followers a day, 4,100 Facebook likes. How to do SEO for a tiny website that doesn't have any visitors money. It's showing you all the articles based on social shares. And if you have a uh, BuzzSumo account, it just keeps showing you more and more. So we're doing this for our competitors. We're looking at Ahrefs and seeing what their most popular content is via Google, and we're rewriting it and doing better posts with our own spin on it. We're then putting in our competitor URLs in BuzzSumo and doing the same thing. And we're seeing what's the most popular on the social web. In combination of both of those strategies, we're wrapping up content, and the goal is just to have one of the biggest online marketing blogs out there. And I think I can do it within the next two years. That may seem like a long time, but not really, right? If I can get like six, seven million visitors a month within two years, that's not too bad. That's a shitload of traffic. And it works. Like I'm wrapping up content production. Just look at my traffic. You'll see what large content volume and production does. If I go audience overview in my Google Analytics, last uh, 695,000 visits, right? I've just been ramping up production. And then now if I go from, let's do the 23rd to the 22nd, because today is technically August 23rd and it's not over. So if I do 31 days compared to the you know previous month, I'm already at 823,000 unique visitors without paid ads. That's crazy. And last month I was at 695. Can you see the value of just cranking out and pushing a ton of high quality content? This month, I don't know what I'll end up at, but it'll probably be at least 800,000 unique visitors. That's 100,000 more than 695. If it's 100 divided by 695, I think that's around 15%. So 14.3%, right? Um, that's huge growth. And that's what we're doing to just ramp up our content and just crank and try to beat everyone else. The goal is to get to five, six million unique visitors a month. Clayton, are any specific questions coming in? Yeah, we've got a bunch. Um, what are people thinking of this process? <laughs> they're liking it. They're, a couple of people were asking about keyword density. Maybe you can comment on that when you go back in and add more keywords. You mentioned you don't stuff, but what's a good guide to make sure that you're not doing that? Oh, so check this out. That's actually a good question. So what we do is we put in competitor URLs and we see what keyword density they have uh -huh. for the terms we're adding and we try to keep it around the same percentage. Um, and if our posts are way longer, we don't try to keep it the same percentage. We just look at count number. So if they're using, let's say if our post is five times longer, we won't have the same density nor do we try to optimize for it. But if they have the word search engine 14 times and our post is five times longer, we may not have the same density, ours will probably be lower, but we'll try to do somewhere between like 14 and 20 times, right? We just do a bit more count-wise. Gotcha. 
Somebody's asking uh, what what you like to use SEMrush and Ahrefs for in different ways. I love SEMrush as well. I have an account. Funny enough, I have an account to all of them. Ahrefs, SEMrush, BuzzSumo, they're all kind just because I'm a blogger. You know, they all offer me to like put in affiliate links. I hate affiliate links, so I won't do it. And I don't want to get paid to mention someone. I'll only mention them when I like it. Yep. But um, I have technically free versions of all of them because uh, I use them. I love using SEM Rush for paid ads. I love using Ahrefs for my organic and link building. And I love BuzzSumo for social sharing data. Got it. Perfect. Somebody's asking, have you tried Epic Beats over BuzzSumo? I've never heard of that. Have you? Uh, I have heard of it but I haven't been to it in a long time and I cleared all my browser settings because then I just came back from Brazil. Is it called Epic Beats or Epic, Epic Beats. something? It, well, that's what he typed at least, Epic Beats, just like you've got it. So I'm not sure. Maybe we've got the, the wrong. I know. I, there's an Epi, Epi something because my guys and I were creating a presentation and we found something similar to Bustimo. It was like Epic, Epi something. And I don't know what it was, but I checked it out because my team told me about it. And was oh, Epic time. Beat, maybe with no S, he's saying. Epic or Epi? Uh, he's typing Epic. I think it's Epi. Okay. E no, this isn't it. I don't know, but it was in one of my SEO Unlock presentations. I know what he's talking about. Yeah, let's get to some uh, content-related uh, questions. And, and yeah, when you just asked, is everybody loving this, a bunch of flood of people started typing in, thanks for the clear explanation, um, et cetera, et cetera. Somebody's asking, Anastasia is asking, what do you do if your uh, competitors – are authority sites and you're not, and you have very little content that is directly competing with them. But the high authority ones in her industry are like WebMD or something like that. Suggestions? You go, you go more niche. If you go more niche, you'll do better off. If you go too broad, you won't uh, beat the WebMDs and all of that. So Google has something with the Hummingbird update and you can see it from the penny hoarder. Uh, have you heard of Get Rich Slowly? Uh, I have, yeah. Harder. So Get Rich Slowly had way more authority. Check this out. GetRichSlowly.org. Okay, so let's look at the backlink profile, right? So Get Rich Slowly has an estimated 49,000 visitors, 12,000 referring backlinks, right? Yep. Uh, DR of 61. The penny, it's loading slow, come on. Penny hoarder, all right? Look at, so 49 and 12. So 12,000 referring domain names and 49,000 visits. Backlinks, 5.84 from referring domain names. That's less than half. Organic traffic, 1.2 million. That's a huge difference, 49,000, 1.2 million. Do you know what the penny hoarder did to beat their competitor who is owned by a publicly traded company that at one point was worth a few hundred million dollars and they had more backlinks and more resources, right? What they did is they focus better content with a niche. So if you're going against WebMD, you're not going to beat them by just talking about anything medical related. But if you focus, let's say just on uh, spine health or posture or, uh, Organic nutrition. I don't know. I'm making shit up. But if you really focus like that and you pick a niche within health, you can dominate them. Because Google prefers ranking niche sites over broad sites. And that's from the Google Hummingbird update. And that's how smaller sites with amazing content are crushing their competitors. Nice. People are saying they like the screen sharing element of this presentation. So that's a good note. Jonah has a question. What's the best balance of creating new content versus optimizing old content? Yeah, so I have a team of two editors. I have a lot of writers who help me out. I know you guys know, it's, it's like I'm not writing 10 posts a day or six posts. I write a lot. I write myself. I have tons of Word documents. From there, someone then goes and re-edits. I also have a team who helps me come up with topic ideas, and then I just go and crank. I make it ugly, someone corrects it, puts it in my style guide, and uploads it. But I still probably spend three to four hours a day writing, right? But I can't scale without a team. So 
I, I purely just write myself. I don't optimize. And then I have a guy named David Zhang who works for me. He's in charge of an optimization team. And they try to go through like one or two posts a week and make them like 10,000 words. Okay. And we only do that based on how many are hits. Um, we would do more, but the problem is, is we're not generating enough hits. What I mean by that is if I wrote 20 articles a day, I'm going, I'm just throwing out crazy numbers. And if five of them were natural hits, then my guys would rewrite five articles and make them more in depth. But because that's not the case, you know, whenever we have hits, uh, through Google search console, which they're showing, which posts are really popular, then we'll do rewrites. And the way we do it is purely based off of click through. So you see impressions, CTR clicks. This is my Google search console. If I go and look at this, right? 3.86, this post may need to be rewritten. It's getting a lot of impressions, not enough clicks. Um, what is affiliate marketing? Not bad, but posts like this improve Google rankings without getting penalized. That's way too many impressions and not enough of a click rate. 1.91. That's too low. So this post needs to be rewritten, right? This Facebook one rewritten 5.16. What is SEO? Not rewritten 1.13. So we'll go and find all the ones that have low click through rates and just redo them. And when we do that and we've added the keywords in the title tag and meta description, our rankings go up. How do you decide how long to, to make them? However long it needs to be until we cover everything under that topic. So it might and be 2,000 words originally and then go to up to 10,000 or something like that? Yeah, it could even go to 20. We usually cap it around 10. We, won't, we try not to go under 10 because it's just too long. Gotcha. Just as long as you've got all those keywords in a useful way that you looked at inside of Search Console in the article. Got it. Exactly. Okay, Jeepers is asking, will you discuss or do you ever target competitors' featured snippets or is, do you just avoid it because it's too difficult to achieve versus some other lower hanging fruit in another area? I think featured snippets are awesome. We don't focus on them too much. Either we get them or we don't. We just find more articles doing it in quantity, or we find more traffic just doing it in quantity. And then from there, uh, rewriting it all, right? So like, for example, you see this post right here, 10 advanced SEO techniques. So I used to rank number one and have feature snippets. Okay, techniques, SEO techniques. And what ended up happening is as I rewrote it, I lost the featured snippet. Right, as you can see here, SEO techniques are classified in two broad categories. Tutorial point has it now, who's number three. SEO tactics and methods. So what I found is when I rewrite a lot of my posts that have snippets, I tend to lose them. Um, and what I do now is I don't rewrite the ones that have rich snippets. I also don't uh, go after people who have rich snippets, like if they do, I still don't care. I'll still try to rank for that term organically and try to rank number one, but I don't care if, you know, someone has it or not. I don't try to aim to get featured snippets. I just try to get ranking. I just look at who's getting traffic according to address from Google and just do that in quantity. I found the feature snippets are harder to control. Interesting. Amit's got a good question, switching gears a little bit. He wants to know, do you use marketing automation tools and which ones do you think are the best? We use Infusionsoft, it's a piece of shit. It has a lot of issues, but it has the most features, so we use it. I use ConvertKit, it doesn't have all the features. I get tons of errors, but it works. My deliverability is better. Um, those are the main two that I use right yeah. now. And then we also use HubSpot. Sales team loves HubSpot. It's a good product. You must have, in your experience, for however long you've been in this industry, tried almost all the marketing automation tools, I would guess, right? I've tried so many of them. I've tried HubSpot, Marketo. I've even got paid by some of these guys to do their marketing like Marketo. I've tried Drip. I've tried ConvertKit. I've tried MailChimp. I've tried, um, there's one that Salesforce owns. I forgot the name. But I've pretty much tried most of them. And I found that Infusionsoft is the best for complex funnels, um, but their deliverability sucks. And I found ConvertKit has amazing deliverability but they just don't have as many features and there's so many errors in ConvertKit. Like every time I try to send an email, I get an error. And it's like a pain in the butt. I was like emailing Nathan, the founder, or texting him the other day. I was like, dude, can you either fix errors? I'm like, if you can't fix the errors, I'm just gonna go and create a competing product. And crush yeah, it. right, just copy the whole thing. Well, a bunch of people are asking, 
about one specific topic and I'll bring it up here. Um, but it's, it's interesting because some of the people in the chat are actually answering this topic. It's around content writers. Everybody wants to know where, how do, what's your suggestions for finding a good content writer? Do you let them pick the topics? How do you manage them? Blah, blah, blah. And then I'm seeing content writers that are at this summit saying, Hey, I'm a content writer. If you need help, contact me. Do you have any uh, comments on how to find good help, good content writing? Uh, maybe it's around, yeah. uh, are you happy to pay top dollar? Is that the, the answer to it? Or are there specific places that you can go and find those? Or do you have managers that do that for you? Sure. So if you're a content writer, email grant, G-R-A-N-T at neilpatel.com if you want more work. Uh, we have a shit little work. I'm not talking about my website, but we just have a shit ton of work for content writers for other people. Uh, so that's a quick way if you want business. Um, but the way we find a lot of our content writers is jobs.problogger.net. So I'm loading it up right now. And this job board will get you more writers than any other place. You post an ad, you'll get 100 to 200 job posters or job writer, or whatever people interested. Now, here's how you find a good writer. Okay, here's some tips. One, tell them to write in a conversational tone using you and I. Two, have them send you side, uh, uh, past work samples. Three, tell them what kind of content you want written in your job posting and tell them, hey, when they apply, to give you five or six ideas, headline ideas that they think they can write. Um, four, you know, tell them that when they're writing that you only want them to write paragraphs in five or six lines max, shorter the better. Uh, the next one is to tell them to use subheadings. Uh, the next one is make sure they wrap up each post with a conclusion and at the very end of a conclusion there needs to be a question. So if they follow those steps, they should be good to go. Uh, and you can find them mainly on Pro Blogger job board. Um, we do quite a bit of writing for companies that we work with, and I believe we're spending somewhere around, I don't know, like a hundred and something to like six, seven hundred dollars per post, depending on what we're needing. Sometimes we spend like a thousand dollars per post. Cool. So that's Pro Blogger. If anybody missed it, it's Pro Blogger. It's on the screen now. Um, let's move on to a couple of other questions if you still have some time. Uh, the most yeah. upvoted question was this. So those questions I was just asking were all flying by in the chat. So now I'm going to start give a couple of questions where people have upvoted. And the most upvoted question is from Ashcan. Uh, Ashcan is asking, what's the best strategy for a new blog as part of an online marketplace? Would it be to publish a lot of regular short posts? or focus on long authority in-depth posts. Now his concern is that they spend a lot of time or they might spend a lot of time writing quality posts, but as a new blog, no one's going to sort of read them. So that's the question. Yeah, so write 2000 plus word posts minimum, super detailed the better. What you need to do is once you write the post, you go to BuzzSumo. I think I'm already on BuzzSumo on one of these. Okay, you type in a competitor topic or URL. So let's say your post is on um, Instagram followers. I'm making this up. So I would go to BuzzSumo and type in Instagram followers to see who, other, who else has popular posts on Instagram followers, right? And you know, you may end up seeing, wow, there's so many posts. So let's do one on SEO techniques okay because this is more focus so all right this one from search engine journal has a lot of shares and I just wrote my own post on search engine techniques I would then click view shares and this will show me damn it now I gotta log in and ideally find my login saved lucky me all right see I don't want to no credit, what the heck? I already have a paid account. Why are they trying to get me to do a free trial? Okay, SEO techniques. Okay, so you click view shares. And it shows me every single person who shared this based on their popularity. So then what I would do is Retreat ratio, you see how it's sorting it by like important metrics? 
right? Average retweet 6.1, 3.8, 3.2 is sorting by the most people. I would then go and then I would hit up these people. So I'd be like, let's say this guy's name is Dave Peck. I would then go try to find his email. I can go use hunter.io, hunter.io, so you guys can see. Yeah, Hunter is a good tool. It's a good tool. Connect with anyone. Hunter lets you find email addresses within seconds, right? It's kind of cool. This is a popular site. I should try buying it. Uh, what is it called? So I will then go try to find their email on using hunter.io and I'll email. Uh, so I'll email him, hey Dave, uh, I noticed you shared seven white hat SEO techniques that'll double your traffic by, by uh, Lauren Baker, right? I actually have a similar post coming out that's 17 way or 17 white hat SEO techniques that'll double your traffic. Um, let me know if you want to check it out before uh, I release it, right? And even if I kick publish already on my blog, I'll still use the same email template. And a lot of times, like 20, 30% is something ridiculous. People like Dave will be like, sure, yeah, we'd love to see it. And keep in mind, we're doing this in random industries that I don't even have a name in, so people don't know about me, right? And then once we do that, you're talking about all of these uh, people are messaging, they're like, yeah, we'd love to see it. Then I'll email them back to here you go. Uh, feel free to share it if you like it. Cheers, Neil. It's that simple. When I do that, a lot of the same people who tweeted my competing articles are sharing my posts. That's how my blog posts get traction. And the second thing I do is every time I eat, link out, like if you write a 2,000 word blog post, you're gonna link out to a lot of people. So I'll be like, hey Dave, I just wanted to say I'm a huge fan of your work. So much so I linked out, of, linked out to you in my latest blog post. Feel free to check it out here. If you like it, feel free to share it. Cheers, your number one fan, Neil. That's it. And then I'll get a lot of social shares by combining those two things. And then my new blog is getting traction without having backlinks or anything. And eventually more people link to it and then they start ranking because it has good social signals. Cool. Another uh, very high upvoted question was about Facebook and Instagram. Um, Marika is asking, they're saying that she would love to know more about Facebook and Instagram content marketing. If you could give some advice on how to get more attention, um, that would be amazing. Okay, so with Instagram marketing, you can't drive people back to your site, but it's good for branding. Images, quotes, go look at competitor Instagram profiles and just create similar content on what's doing really well. With Facebook, what I like doing is I go to competing fan pages and I see what has the most amount of shares and likes. And then from there, I create content based on that. I also use BuzzSumo and look at social shares and I type in keywords within my space, such as I can just go um, back and let me type in a keyword. Like I can just type in the word social media marketing because let's say I want more traffic related to that space. I go to BuzzSumo, I see what does well, purely based off of Facebook enjoyments, uh, Facebook engagements, right? Like, shares, etc. I can sort by it. And now I can then go write content that I think would be good for my blog. Cool. Uh, next question is, what's the best strategy for social content marketing for an e-commerce uh, website? Any specific advice? Yeah, so for e-commerce, what I like doing when it comes to social marketing is, I focus more so on reviews. So with e-commerce, I try to get people to sh write more reviews and the reviews aren't gonna help with social shares, but it helps with higher ranking. So every time someone buys your product, email them, ask them to write a review, it creates more text per page. That helps, you know, the more words you have on a page, the higher rankings or more potential keywords you can rank for in the future, and usually you'll get more search traffic and higher rankings. And then the other thing I like doing with e-commerce is, I do listicles, so not for my product pages, but I'll do stuff like um, 101 blenders that you have to check out, and I'm making it up, but something more sexy than that, right? Yeah. Like, uh, you know, 10 crazy strong blenders uh, that you better not put your hands in or something like that, and then showcase the top 10 blenders based on power, you know, maybe show blend tech video of how they're blending iPhones and stuff like that. And then go from there and then you'll find that those e-commerce articles will get a lot of volume 
and you can end up generating sales. I have a blend tech. I don't even cook. I'm never even in my home. So if I don't cook, I'm never even in my home and I bought a blend tech because it can blend uh, bricks and it can blend iPhones. It shows you that this social stuff works. Interesting. So I saw the video. It was like really cool. Will it blend? <laughs> Well, it blend. Blend iPhones. Like, it's going viral on the social web. That's, ooh, iPhone 6. Like, look at this stuff. Will it blend? And they just blend this stuff, right? All like, will, will it blend? blend? <laughs> he, he's like talking about, like, will it blend? Well, like, blend the thing. I got one of those, like, cool, crazy iPhones, right? Like, look at him. This guy. Look at this. He's blending it. You see? In slow mo, like he's doing two colors too. Like, oh, this is cool. It's not blending yet. What the heck? Will it blend? Like, so much. Oh, the black one's starting to tear apart, right? And it's going. And I'm gonna pour it a bit, and like you'll start seeing, like it just goes crazy fast. And he's like blending the crap out of these iPhones. That's why I have one of those bad boys. But one day, even though I've had it for years, one day I'm gonna use mine for something. I don't know what, but I will use it. <laughs> cool. So uh, Michael's asking a question that sort of bridges into SEO. Once a blog post is complete, what are the top five or the top few SEO tips once the, the post is already up? All right. So I need to close this video. It's distracting. <laughs> okay. So once a post is already up, you need to do a few things. So let's go back to the post. One, anytime you edit a post or when you finish a post, once you figure out, also step one, go into Google Search Console after a month or two of that post being up, and you'll see what keywords and impressions that you're getting uh, traffic for. Step two, integrate those keywords within your post. Step three, I'm like going pretty fast. So step two, integrate the keywords in your post. Step three, adjust your title tag and meta description to include those keywords. Step four, go and email out everyone you link to and ask them to share your content. Step five, go to competing articles that you find on BuzzSumo and then ask the people who share those articles to share yours. Do that and all your posts will start ranking better, getting more social traffic. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, so Sandeep is asking, I know there's no silver bullet, but what would be the percentage of time and money spent between content creation and content distribution? And are those different for B2C and B2B? I have a big team, so I have like 150 people who work for me. But um, about a breakdown in percentage, 60, 70% is on creation. 10% uh, is on distribution. 20% is on rewriting. Interesting. Claude is asking something that I thought you. Let, let, let me rephrase. If I was starting off, I would do it 50% of my time writing the article, 50% of my time promoting. Once you have a lot of traffic like me, and what I mean a lot of traffic, you don't even need my levels. Once you're getting above 10, 20,000 visitors a month, I would then spend 70% time writing, 20% time rewriting, 10% of the time promoting. Cool. Great. Yeah, everybody's loving the screen share and saying great answers. Thanks for all these good answers. Let's take a few more. Uh, the next question is from Claude. What are the great strategies and tools to produce at scale, many videos to populate uh, the complete customer, well, just videos. How, how do you produce so many videos? I know you've been into this recently. Yeah, I do one a day. Yeah. Okay, I do one video a day, isn't that crazy? Yes. Everyone else tells me to change my outfit, but I just shoot them all in one go. <laughs> Can you guess how long it takes me to shoot 30 videos? I'd at least say, I don't know, a whole day, half a day? I can do 30 videos in three to four hours max, usually three with breaks. Okay. Interesting. And what about the scripts and, and topics? You, I guess you approach that the same way you approach a lot of the other content marketing you do, correct? I do. And I'm like a one take, you know, type of guy. Like sometimes I have to do two takes, but like I just go and I just crank them out. Well, I'm sure everybody knows you own other clothes, so no worries. <laughs> yeah. But it's okay. I'll just keep wearing the same outfit over and over again. But it works. Like, here's my video stats. Let's go to analytic. 
I hate hearing my voice. Yeah, Abby's saying she took notes to the entire last answer to the question that you gave. So thanks. Yeah, awesome. So if I just if I look at all my all my video sets, it's going up over time. YouTube's new for me, but if you look at this, I'm at 112,000 views in the last 30 days or 20, or 28 days. It's not too shabby. Absolutely. So it's continually going up. Oh, I've got a good question. It might not be something that you've got experience in, in but I, I'd be interested to hear your take. So Stan is asking, uh, he's creating a video course and video training. Um, how do you deal with putting the course, how do I deal with people putting my course on the torrent trackers? There's a guy named Takedown uh, Cesar or Takedown Czar. Google him. He offers a service and he takes it all down for you. He's really cheap. He's based in Europe somewhere. Awesome. There you go. There's some good answers. Uh, how much is one email address matching a physical address worth? Now, that's not a good question. My bad. JJ, you'll have to. to uh, but in, in general, one email address is worth typically a dollar a month. So if you have 100,000 emails, you should be generating at least $100,000 a month in revenue. Uh, he was trying to ask what if the email has a matching physical address? Any idea how much value you could More assuming you know how to do direct mail marketing. I don't, but if you know how, it's probably worth a lot more. Yeah, I would guess so. Uh, oh, somebody's asking, Austin's asking, uh, how about all of these new uh, dot clinic dot whatever uh, TLD domains? Do you think those they come into stop. proper rankings? Stay away from them. The reason being is, People type in product and company names. They don't type in like random shit. Okay. You get what I mean, right? Like how often you type in like, oh, let's go to BuzzSumo. I don't be like, hey, I really want to check out my site, buzzsumo.co. Yeah. You get what I mean? Like it's just most people do dot coms. Always try to get a dot com. Almost every big business is a dot com. When they're not a dot com, they eventually try to buy them. Cool. And we've got uh, one other question that I think is probably a great way to wrap this up. Vignesh, who you may know, <laughs> is asking, if you had to boil down everything you've learned in content marketing into one lesson, uh, could you do that and what would it be? Quantity wins. Biggest marketing blog and marketing is probably one of the most competitive spaces because they're competing with people like me and Rand Fishkin from Moz and everyone else who knows marketing. HubSpot has won. Why did they win? They wrote more quantity than anyone else. Well, quantity usually wins for every single niche that I've seen. Quantity, and then of course you need some quality standards. But my posts are way higher quality than HubSpot, yet they can get like five or ten times more traffic. It just shows quantity wins. And it's not just in my space. It's in nutrition. It's in medical. It's in fitness. It's in sports. It's in everything, right? Huffington Post doesn't have the best articles. They just have the most articles. Business Insider doesn't have the best articles. They just have the most articles, right? Same with Mashable, same with TechCrunch, and the list keeps going on and on. Okay, there you go, guys. You heard it. Quantity uh, is a massive factor, which, uh, which Neil obviously knows about, and you saw inside of a bunch of his dashboards today on how his plan is to have one of the biggest or the biggest marketing blogs in the whole world. You're well on your way, Neil. Listen, uh, we've got to wrap up and put the next presenter in line. Thank you for taking the time with us in this first hour. We're going to see you on Friday uh, to do a bunch more Q&A, right? Yes, that sounds good. All right, sounds good. Well, we've got a bunch of questions. I hope you guys enjoyed this session, and we've got a jam-packed day. So we'll let Neil go for now, and you all in the chat session will be just taken automatically into the next session at the top of the hour. So we've got one minute, and then we'll put you in the next, next session. Thanks, Neil. We appreciate it. So if you like this video, like, comment, share, I do appreciate it. And if I can ever do anything to help you out genuinely, even if it's you know giving you some advice, I don't care for the money, just leave a comment below and I will do my best to try to help you out and answer all your questions. Thank you for watching.